Fox One Corp series of training videos. I'm Dave Springford. In this video, I want to take a look at the LX9000 and how we can create tasks and how we can manage tasks within the task mode. What we have here is a task sheet from CU. And this is the task that we want to put in. Right now, it's set up to be an assigned task or a racing task with one mile cylinders at each of the corners, a five mile start, and we'll put in a, a two mile finish cylinder. So we can see we have return points here. We're gonna go from number 80 to 62 to 29 to 63 and back to 58. So over on the LX9000, the first thing that we wanna do, we're in the task menu, but the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go into our setup menu, and we're gonna do that with the top right hand knob, and we're gonna scroll across to our setup menu. And then I want to take a look at the observation zones. And what I like to do here before a contest is set up the observation zones so that they mimic what I'm going to get for that day's task. So for example, this being an assigned task, first thing I want to check is the start zone. So we're going to select it and we can see that it's set up for next. So that's our direct line to the next turn point. That's what we want. Angle 180 degrees, that gives us the full circle. Whatever angle you put in here, you get basically double. So if you want a 90 degree sector, you put 45 degrees in here. If you want a half circle, you put 90 degrees in here. And then finally, the radius, we want to increase that to five miles. What we can see is that we can increase this value using our lower right hand knob it will go up in 0 0.05 mile increments if we use our lower left hand knob then it will jump in five mile increments so depending what increment we want we can use the left and the right knobs to get a bigger jump so we have our start zone set to uh, a full circle with a five mile radius we'll say okay on that We'll go to the next and the point zone. We want the point zone, it's gonna be symmetrical. So it's uh, angle is centered on the inbound and the outbound legs. Again, we have 180 and here, I want this to be one mile. So I'm gonna come over here and rotate the lower right until I get out to one mile. If it's actually an assigned task, you can put auto next. So that means as soon as you fly into the zone and get one fix, the computer will automatically select the next turn point in your task. In US rules, even in an assigned task and in a mat, this one mile circle is a mini area. So I don't select auto next and I actually keep AAT for assigned area tasks selected. So it measures my exact distance into the zone and it doesn't turn to the next point until I physically select next point. So all the points are one mile. They're set up as assigned areas with 180 degree angle. And then we're gonna go into the finish line and the finish line previous. So it's a direct line from the last point, which is what we want. Radius, I want this to be two miles. And one important thing here is the elevation. So the elevation can be adjusted. If you have a finish point that's a thousand feet AGL, what you want your computer to do is navigate you to the edge of the circle right here at a thousand feet AGL. So what I do is I increase the elevation, ground elevation let's say is 700 feet at the center and we want to finish at a thousand feet. So I will set here 1700 and so now it will navigate me to the edge of the zone at 1700 plus whatever safety height I have put in plus whatever safety McCready I have put in. All right, so we have to take those into account, but it's gonna navigate you to get you there at that point in the sky, a thousand feet above the, above the center of the airport. So I'm happy with all of those turn point edits for a assigned task. So what we'll do is we'll close this and now we'll go back to our task page 
And in our task page, we're going to click on one of the buttons. Bottom right is edit, so we'll edit. The first field that I want to edit is going to be the task time. If this is a, uh, an assigned task or a racing task, usually there's no task time given, but I like to put my own time in. So this is 214 miles. So if I put 30, uh, three hours in here, it means I'm going to have to do about 71 miles per hour to get around that task. So that's kind of my goal. So here I'm going to set this to three hours. Again, you'll see if we use the uh, lower right hand knob, we can get a 15 minute change in time. If I use the lower left hand knob, I get a one minute change in time. So I'm going to keep using my lower right hand and I'm going to take this down in 15 minute increments to three hours. We'll say OK. And now what I want to do is I want to put my first point in. So we're going to scroll down and edit the task. So the start point we say over here on our task sheet is number 80. So we want to use our lower right knob here and we want to start scrolling. I have this set up so that we are in filter mode. We'll talk about filter and list up here. So you can see when I turn this lower right hand knob, I'm getting jumps of 10. So I'm going 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So I want to use turn point 80. I'm going to press select, it's there. Now that I'm in the eights, because I'm in filter mode, if I select again, I'll get 81, 82, 83 and spin the knob the other way, I can go back to 80. So that's filter mode. It allows you to filter on only the first digit. And if you're using a waypoint file with numbers, I find that a really fast way to do this. So I'm gonna select turn point 80, and then we're gonna rotate the knob to go down to the next field. And now we wanna put in turn point number one. Turn point number one is 62. So Again, I'm going to edit that field, and now I'm on 80, so I'm going to turn counterclockwise to go back to 60s. I'm going to select, then I'm going to turn clockwise to get to 62, and I'm going to select that. Next turn point is 29 Hagersville. So again, we rotate down one field, we edit this. And if I go up here and click on list, now you'll see I get the entire list and I can scroll through the list one at a time. So I can go all the way down to 29. Said so I find this a lot slower than using the filter method, but it does give you the full list and you can see all the names. So I scroll down to 29. I'm going to select number 29. So now we're going to rotate down to one more field and we want to put in number 63 St. Thomas. So we're going to edit this. You can see it starts at one. So if I have to go to 63, for me it's a lot shorter to go to filter. And now I just have to do six clicks to get up to 60. Select all of the sixes and then three clicks to get the St. Thomas. Otherwise, I would have had to have done 63 clicks to go through the list. So that's why I like the filter method. We're going to select that. And then finally, our last is our finish point at 58 Rockton. So down one more field, edit that field. So now that I'm in the 50s, I'll just rotate the knob clockwise until I get up to 58, and I'll select that. And so what we can see on this task is that we now have our start at 80, turn point 62, 29, 63, and the finish at 58. So we double check against our task sheet, 80, 62, 29, 63, 58. We can look at the distances as well. And what I see over here is 43.6, and here I see 48.6. When the task is shown on this page, it does not subtract the five miles. So this 48.6 minus our five mile start circle is our 43.6. Then we have a 55.9, 55.4, 55.5, 55.6, 55.7, 55.8, 55.9, 55.8, 55.9, 55.9, 55.9, 55.9, 55.9, 55.9, 55.9, 55.9, 55.9, 55.9
and a 58.4. The problem is in CU, I have the finish zone set to one mile instead of the two miles that I have on the LX. So that's why we have a one mile difference here. The other thing to look at is the total task distance. So we have 214. We should be off by five miles. So it should be uh, 219, but I made a one mile mistake over here in CU. So we're actually off by four. So we have 218 versus 214. So our task distance is correct. The other thing to notice is that we have these pound symbols or these hashtags beside the turn points. Whenever you see those on a list, it means the zone has been selected as an AAT or a turn area zone. So the last thing that I want to do is I want to just reconfirm all of the zones to make sure they're correct before I save this task. So we'll go down here to the zone button and the finish zone we can see is 180 degrees, two miles, 1700 feet. We're happy with that. I go next. I'm going to go to the start now, and I can see it's 180 and 5 miles. Turn point 1, 62, 180 and 1 miles with an assigned area. Turn point 2, 29 at Hagersville, 180 with 1 mile, and it's a turn area. Turn point 3, 180 with 1 mile, it's a turn area. And once more, we get back to the finish zone where we started verifying the zones. So I'm happy with all that. And I'll close. So what I want to do now is go into the options for the task. And the task options, we always want to have navigate to nearest selected. That navigate to nearest is at the start going to navigate us to the edge of the cylinder, not to the center of the cylinder. And at the finish, it's also going to navigate us to the edge and subtract that two mile distance. Start arm mode, that's explained in one of my other videos, so we won't talk about that here. In US, we want to select start at the top. We can put our start altitude and ground speed requirements of the rules. We can put those in here. And the finish elevation that we have in our finish height is also put in the box here, so we can verify that's the same. So with those options, the only other thing I want to do is I want to go up into description. And right here in the description, I can rotate this bottom right knob till I'm in the description field and edit. And now what I want to do is I want to put this as task A. So I'm just going to put the letter A. And I say OK. And now this is saved with the name task A. So I'll close that. So now what I want to do is I want to save this task that we've just named as A. So we're going to click on More. We're going to come down here to Save. Now that we have the message the task is saved, if I click on Load, I should be able to find that saved task in my list. If I scroll down, I can see right here Polygon A that I've saved from 80 to 62 to 29 to 63 to 58. So that's the task I saved. I can load it, and now it's ready to go. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to put in an area task. So let's go over here, and basically we'll use the same task. We'll call it the B task for the day. Instead of being an assigned task or a racing task, we're going to make it an area task with 15-mile circle, 10-mile circle, 15-mile circle. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my setup and my observation zones. And for my point zone, instead of making it one mile, since I have two tasks or two turn points in this task that are 15 miles, I'm just going to bump this up to 15 miles and say OK. We'll close that, close again. And now we'll go back to our task page. We'll click here. And we'll edit. And what I want to do is I want to start with a completely fresh screen so I don't get any ghosts left over from this first task. I've uh, lost some points in contest by editing tasks and not editing them correctly. So I now like to just come in here, hit the clear button, completely delete that task. It's still saved in memory, but I want to clear it from the loaded task. And now I want to start all over again. So this task is as an area task going to be a four-hour area task. 
put in an OK here, scroll down, and the same thing, we want to select all of our points. So we want to start at 80. We're going to select that. We're going to scroll down. And now we want to find 62. So we're going to scroll to the 60s, select up to 62, select again, scroll down, edit. We now want to go to 29. So we're going to scroll down to 30, select, and then go backwards one to 29. That's a change from some previous versions of the software. In earlier versions, if I was on 30 and I went backwards, I went to 39, 38, 37. Now, if I'm on 30 and I go backwards, I actually go into the 29. So we're going to select this, scroll down once more, edit. We want to go to 63. One too far. Select the 60s. Up three. And now edit one more time. And I can just actually hit select now because I want to go to 58. So I'm going to go from 63 straight down to 58 and select. Okay, so there's our task again. We have the uh, hashtags here showing us that these are assigned areas. We have our start, we have our finish, we have our four hours. As before, we want to check the zones. So we'll go in here. We still have a two mile radius, 180 degrees, 1700 feet. That shouldn't have changed. The start will not have changed. It's going to be our five miles with 180. So really what we want to change, we set the default to 15. So the only thing I need to change is this Hagersville down to 10 because both of these stay at 15. So I'm going to go next and then bottom right knob. We'll scroll through until I get to the 15, edit it. One click with the lower left and we're down to 10. And we'll say OK on that and we'll go next. And now we have 15 again, next, and back to our finish. So the zones are good. We can save all that. Our options should not have uh, changed. They should stay the same. So one thing that we absolutely have to do now is we have to edit the description, and we need to make this task B. And say OK. And we still want navigate to nearest point. Um, again, you can put gate times in if you know them. Um, Below time, that's the two minutes below the start altitude. There's your start altitude that you can put in. We want to select start out the top. And that has our task options all set. So we can close that. And one more time, go to more. Come down here to save. And we have save task B. So now, if I go into load, we can see that I have task A and task B. So I can scroll down here and say, we're, we're always on task A. Until the CD says we're not, we're always on task A. So there's task A. We're going to load it. And now I have task A loaded. I can tell because I have three hours instead of four hours here. So that's how we would manage our tasks. Hopefully you've learned something new about your LX computer today. If you have any questions, drop them into the comments or send me an email. And please visit me online at www.fox1corp.com for all your glider supplies.